afternoon everybody um come home from work and i'm gonna do a tag i love the fact that sometimes when i'm coming home in my car i think like, oh i've got no school work to do tonight that's flipping awesome i can go do some sewing what shall i do and i just thought as i was coming home i've got this tag buzzing around my brain so i thought i'll crack on with tag number four um end of january i think yep must be the end of january so keeping it quite simple not a lot of stuff on my table today so i have collected together some bits and pieces so i've got some little bits of just plain fabric um this is i think it's like cotton wadding that's been dyed um i've got a bag of it that i think somebody sent me um if you did thank you ever so much or i've bought it from somewhere or i'm not sure it's just in my stash i've got a lovely little array of bits of fabric so i've got my one for the background which is going to be that one and then we're going to be doing windows today so you don't need a lot of fabric just small little pieces and then you need two threads so you need a dark thread and then something that's really yummy zingy that really stands out so i have um these linen threads that i have got from Namolio. you can follow them on instagram um they're gorgeous threads loads and loads of different colors they can be a bit tricky sometimes to sew with but they're definitely worth persevering persevering with i think i need to put my teeth in properly um my brain's still not connected to my mouth mind you was it ever really i don't think it was probably the best way to be um so this is a natural flax wet spun five ply um it's a 25 gram ball i get these from um yarndale when we go they were two pound fifty when i bought these ones um this one i've had for quite a few years it, you do they do last quite a long time i've got a little box that was, well, get them out little selection of their threads so this is my little box that i have um absolutely gorgeous colors that's probably the zingiest one that I've got. The quite nice, nice muted sorts of colours. Can't wait to use that lilac one. That'll probably come up soon in a tag. So, what are we doing? We're doing little windows. So I just thought the last three that we've done, especially the last two, it's been a bit fiddly. So I'm hoping in my head that this one is going to be a little bit nicer. Got my cup of coffee. Oh, weather's been a bit bonkers. We've had really warm days really cold days looking out now what time are we now it's about five past four and it's blue skies I can actually see an aeroplane don't see many of them we used to see quite a lot over here because sometimes we get the flight pass from um manchester airport um and obviously there's not been that many of them okay right so start like we always do i've got my little template don't place that on and then trim it is an ideal thing to have is a little template because it just makes your life that little bit easier when you're just getting going so hopefully you've enjoyed the last three tags i liked doing last week's it's just nice just knowing like that little tin of buttons that i'd kept and just kept adding to every time I found some little buttons just to use them so they're up here in front of me while I'm working and it's it's so nice just look up and you just see and you just think oh that's cute oh that's what I think anyway okie dokie so I've got my little backing piece so we're going to cut out some windows so I don't know I quite, I quite like that colour it's a bit darker but anyway I might go for one dark and three light ones let's move that out of the way so just for your little windows you're just going to cut little rectangles there we go this reminds me of a um, kids tv program that i used to watch called play school the round window and the circle window and the semicircle which window will it be today who knows actually i think i put oh i see i've only put one blooming square on and i'm already faffing what's gonna go where what's gonna go where 
That's not good to start faffing straight off. Okay. One, two, one, two. And then I might go with my grey. Grey. Is that a is that a word? Greyer. Greyer. Not greyer. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I quite like the paler ones. Quite apt really for winter to suppose these colours. Yep, there we go. So that's really simple, so we really don't need a lot of fabric this week. Those tiny, tiny little windows. Right, I'm just going to pop a pin just in each one, just to hold them in place. And then what we're going to do is we're going to stitch them onto the background. So the reason that I've sort of chosen this sort of cotton waddiny sort of fabric is um, because it sort of gives you a little bit of a quilted feel, I suppose with what you do in but you don't have to you can just use normal fabrics if you want it to feel a bit quilted get a piece of backing fabric and pop a piece of cotton wadding on the back or a bit of quilting or anything but they can just be flat it's perfectly fine so i'm going to use um the dark thread first and what we're going to do is just stitch around the edge of the little windows Okay, let's get it in place. There we go. Right then, so just start stitching. So I want this to be sort of near the edge. And I'm just going to do really small running stitch. I probably should have done this on one of the lighter ones because then you'd be able to see it a little bit easier. That's bad thinking, Anne. Okay. So, let's hold that up. Yeah, it probably would have been better if I'd have done it on the lighter one. Come on, Mr. Camera. I think it's when it can see too much of the background. Go for it. Oh, oh. Right, what I'll do, we tie that one off at the back and let's do one of the lighter ones because at least then oh, you'll be able to see. All the best planned, best laid plans, so to speak. Okay. Start again. If you just run your thread through your fingers, it just puts a little bit of oil from your fingers onto your thread. It just makes it run just that little bit easier. Right, okay, let's start again. There we go. Through you come. got quite a small eye on my needle so that's why it's taking a bit of pulling through because the linen threads should probably just it's probably just a little bit too thick but I wanted oh, I'll just miss the edge of the fabric there I wanted a nice thin needle for stitching with now if you wanted to with this particular technique one of the things that you could do is pop some bonder web on the back of your squares, especially if you're using a flat fabric like a cotton or a linen or something like that. Oh God, this is just not wanting to work. I don't know, it's meant to be relaxing. I've come home from work all excited that I'm going to sit and do some sewing and it's kind of stressing me out. Come on, go through. There we go. Right, so I'm just doing a little running stitch 
around the edge. If you wanted to do a blanket stitch or a back stitch or anything like that, you can do as usual any sort of stitch that you want, but you want to keep these ones fairly simple because we're going to put um, lines across the middle and horizontally and vertically on them to create the little windows and then within the windows then we're going to do different types of stitching. So the outside is really simple. Running, I would say running stitch or a back stitch is probably the best. Even a blanket stitch would probably be a bit too much unless you do it that the edges there and the lines go outwards. Don't have the lines coming into your windows. So if I do, I'll stitch one of them and show you how we're going to do the inside and then what I'll do is as usual I'll pop some photos of the finished one so I'll take that pin I'll just change the direction of that pin just so that I don't end up stabbing myself I think I'm going to run out of thread it's always the way that's probably because I started that other one Normally when you're doing a running thread, you can do your needle going all in one go. Um, sort of like in, out, in, out, in, out. But the thing I find with that sometimes is you don't get the smallest of stitches. They can end up being a little bit too big. Oops. So I hope everybody's well this Friday. I hope you're enjoying the challenge. Now we're up and running and we've got going. Hopefully any of the little gremlins have sorted themselves out. Now we know where where we are and where to find it. I just thought it'd be quite, it's just quite good all in one place. It just means you can go back and have a look at any of the past ones. So if there's one you don't fancy doing that week, leave it out you can come back to it another week and also remember that you can put your own twist on it so depending on the size of your um, bunting flags or whatever it is you've decided to do these could be different shapes they could be circular triangular it really 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 doesn't matter it's mainly just the fact that we've got a big shape at the back we've added shapes and then we're going to create little blocks inside them for um, a little bit of stitching so I've got all my needles ready so hopefully this should have been. makes my life a little bit easier hopefully this needle is going to play no it's really weird I've got some needles yeah I keep picking up certain needles and they're just not the sharpest of the brunch which is fine with a lot of fabrics but I think when you're doing something like this you want a nice little sharp needle there we go she says and she's done another small height take that out quite nice not having a lot of stuff out on the table bit of breath of fresh air I think sometimes you've got too much fabric you can spend too much time faffing so with the fabrics for this week they want to be plain I probably should have mentioned that to start off with um, you don't want patterned fabrics because we're gonna like I say we're gonna do some stitching inside the little shapes that we're just about to create in a minute and I've just finished going all the way around it's getting a bit easier now <laughs> she says it is honest to the corner and then back up to the beginning 
So that possibly took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to do. You'll notice I started part way up. I didn't start in a corner. Just find that a little bit easier. Sometimes if you start in a corner, especially because you've got a knot at the back, um, it can just end up being a little bit bulky. There we go. There we are. Right, so what we're going to do, stitching all the way around. So I'll end up stitching around all those so they're all attached. And then what we're going to do is we're going to split our little windows up. So you could do it with a cross. Um, they don't have to be straight. They don't have to be symmetrical or evenly spaced. And I'm going to start them just outside the window. And then go across this time what I'm going to do, because I do want a solid line, I'm going to make my stitches a little bit bigger, but I'm going to do a back stitch. So back stitch, you go back. So I've done my little stitch there. So you go back and you go back down the hole. So I've done my little stitch. So I come up a little bit further on, coming up a little bit further on for some reason my camera has decided he don't want to work there we go so coming up a little bit further on pull it through and then a back stitch you just go back down the previous hole and what that gives you is a solid line now if you want to you could draw yourself guidelines on I am just winging it. So I'm going to go across. So we're then going to create ourselves some little spaces, little shapes to stitch and add some decorative stitches. So these could be little running stitches. Um, they could be short and long. You could do some French knots. Um, could be anything really. That's there. And then coming from the top. So I'm coming from the outside of the window and in. Just so that it holds that edge down on your little window. So again these stitches are a little bit bigger than the ones that I've done around the edge but it is a solid line and you do want that solid line to create your little frames. And then we're going to go, you could continue doing some bits in this thread um, but it'd be quite nice then to play around with your contrasting thread that stands out. So there's different things that you could do. You could stitch a little frame within a frame and then stitch inside that. You could just stitch, fill a shape. You don't have to stitch every one. I think it's quite nice as well to leave some of them unstitched. The last one come from the outside and then go down onto your window. Okay, flip it round. So I've created my little little shape. So we're going to do little stitches in these ones. So like I say, you could do a little frame within a frame. So this one here is a little bit bigger. So what I can do is slightly smaller back stitch oh, please say I'm not going to run out of thread okay so when it comes to adding the stitches in the middle I'll demonstrate a couple but you can use anything this is lovely no matter what level of embroiderer you are because if you're just starting out even just a little straight stitch you could do straight stitch cross cross stitch um, a satin stitch which fills a shape 
and then move on to other ones if you want to and because they're only tiny they don't take that long I'm going to run out of thread just tie it off on the back so tie it off just pop it through she says and just run your needle back through create a little knot in your oat I need a new oat, my oat's full from last year it's not, not bad going really either that or I need a bigger one I know in springtime um, people put them outside for the birds for their nests which is kind of cute I might end up doing that this year and then starting afresh there we go there we go not on the end do, do, do. there we go it's always annoying when you've only got a little bit more to do yet you've run out of thread so to say that they're only little bits of sewing little white flags then when you start doing little bits like this it's surprising actually how long it takes you to do them but I think with all of the pieces that have been like the last year's challenge and this year's challenge um, depending on what's going on in your life it depends on how much time you can spend on it so some weeks you might have a lot of time the following week you might not so if you don't have a lot of time this week you could then use pattern fabric if you wanted to and just create four little windows on your little flag and just do a little bit of stitching around the edge okay right so I've gone all the way around so for that one I've done my framing that's all done okay so I'll tie it off there we go right so then I've got my lovely zingy coloured thread so there we are there's my first little window yeah it's working now I don't know what it is with cameras so I've gone a little running stitch around the edge then back stitch for a cross and like that when it comes round to doing um, the little windows got that piece of paper there we go. Um, there's loads of different ways that you could do them so you've got your little windows you could do very traditionally and just do a cross you could have one line down and these going in different directions you could have one that way and two that way your crosses in the middle could go a bit Katie Corner and like I say you could then put little frames inside some of the slightly bigger ones so you're just playing around just with that idea if you've got a long window you might just want to split it top and bottom so it depends on your tag and the shapes but that's the basic principle behind the little windows and then you're going to get your lovely zingy colour and start filling some of these in so this one here um, that I've done my little frame I'm just going to fill it just with some nice long stitches now if you're doing long stitches you do need to be careful with your tension so that it doesn't distort your piece of work so it's pulling it through until you can just feel it catching so a satin stitch is a filling stitch and they're just really really long now you can get them filling so that they're right next to each other or you could just have the tiniest little gap in between so it's just going top to bottom keeping on the inside of your little frame and just having this little pop of colour especially if you can get something that's contrasting to your backgrounds just makes your little windows shine so mine has sort of got I suppose a bit of a wintry feel they're all really nice shades of grey and blue but a bit 
of that black back in November. I always I love November. Uh, it's my favourite month of the year. Absolutely love it, Max, because my birthday is in November. Um, but it's weird, really weird, because the weather usually up to my birthday is quite nice. And then the second you hit my birthday, just like that latter end of November, you go through that bit where it's just grey. Grey, grey days. I don't mind winter. I'm probably more of a winter person than a summer person. Um it's like looking out now it's a beautiful clear sky i can see the moon's just come out it's the most gorgeous shade of light look the sky um i love it. it's just really crisp and clear so look at that look at that lovely little pop of color so then other things then that you could do um you could do little running stitches this one here i'm going to do um some little lines of french knots so a french knot if you bring your thread up you point your needle and your thread away from the hole, wrap it round. I'm going to do it three times. Just hold on to that. You're going to go back down next to your hole. You just make sure you've got your little knot at the bottom of your needle and then pull it through. So I'm going to fill this one with tiny little dots. Dots, not dots, knots. I'll do some with running stitch. And I'm just going to stick with the yellow. I'm only going to use these two colours because I think if you start adding more colours, um, you're going to lo lose that lovely contrast. Now you can then stitch down your background if you want to. You could do in between. You could do your dark thread and do a run-in stitch in the background. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I'll see what it's like once I've done all my windows. Now you don't need to fill every single one. You can decide how many of them you want to fill. You might have one that you fill them all in. So my one there that's my different coloured sort of background, I might do something in each one of those ones. And then these ones I might just do um, two of each in each one. Oh, got a bit of paper going on there so that's what we're doing this week our little flag or a little piece of bunting is gonna have windows on it so I'll put some pictures at the end just showing you the different techniques that I've done but like I've said I'm put another one in there really fill it um, you can do any techniques you want to any stitches you want to but just make the time just to enjoy stitching just enjoy what you're doing cup of tea put us I don't know a list of, um, a podcast on or some music or a film or just something make some time for you that's what's more important with this a little bit of time oh sorry just punch it in the face a little bit of time each week just for you so there we go that's one little window done let's get this flag pop it on there oh it's cute so that hopefully will look really cool once they're all done and you can actually see them all stitched down so that's week number four um, of our flags handmade can't wait to see everybody's little windows is it going to be a wintry window summery window springtime um totally up to you they don't they're just even just little squares little quilty bits it doesn't have to be a window and um, you put a twist on it however you want to put a twist on it so happy stitching can't wait to see over on facebook and instagram what you've been up to and i will see you same time same place next Friday. Love and hugs. Mwah.